Assalamu alaikum. I hope you guys are good. Okay, so in this video, we will talk about some more questions, which are from some NAST uh, past papers, and they are related to the topic differentiation. So I've already uploaded the first part of this video on our channel, and this is the second part. So let's get started. I'll uh, share the questions. All right, so these are some questions. Okay, so let's get started. Now the equal rule. Now in all of the four options, what we see is that the derivative is getting zero, right? We also see that the power uh, or the degree of this uh, equation is six because the function would become zero when we will derivate it one more time. That is when we will derivate this function seven times, only then we are going to get zero. So this is the correct choice, okay? And this is a rule in general. For example, let's say if I had y equals x to the power 4. In that case, I would have chosen y5 equals 0 because I will derivate it 5 times and that would give me 0. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the next question now. So here we have if y is vw, then which is false? Now, this is a function. More or less, uh, we will be using product rule. Um, now, when we will derivate it for the first time, we know that we will get A option, right? That would be B, W1, plus V1, W. Like, we will derivate W1, we keep V constant, plus V as it is, and V1, or W as it is, and then B1, right? So, A is correct. If I talk about the second one, I will get Y2 when I will derivate Y1. So, again, I can follow that using these. First term would be uh, V as it is, and the derivative of W1, that would be this one. Then for the second one, I will get V1, W1. And that is why I have two times uh, V2 and W. All right. So this is also correct. We also have to derivate this one. So if I derivate this one, I will get I will get V1, W2. And I am not able to see V1, W1. Right? This E was to find the wrong one. So it means that it would be C. Because we know that when we will derivate V, W2, we will get V, W3 plus V1, W2. So we don't have V1, W2. That is why I have uh, let's talk about the next question. That is my key question. Here we have if y equals e to the power 20x throughout the derivative, the fourth order derivative. For this, we need to think about the derivative of e to the 20x of which e to the power 20x. When we derivate it again, 20 would be multiplied. Then again, 20 would be multiplied. So this means that we have four. So we so this means that we will have four zeros. So this means that the answer is going to be b because e to the 20x would come as it is. we have 16 in every option so we need to focus on the zeros so we will have one two three four zeros okay that is why b is the answer all right let's talk about next question that is a 21 okay. now basically the question says minimum value for minimum value we need to do a lot okay we need to find the derivative equated to zero because we know that at maximum and minimum points the derivative is zero once we equate derivative equal to zero we will get some values of x and y so what is it going to be so it would be dy where minus 6x and since it is the minimum value to find the values of x which satisfy this equation i'll take 3x common equals 0 this means that i have x equals 0 and x equals 2 this means that either the answer happening when we do uh, y of 2 for this a minus 4 just as you get the value of x you need to plug in that value in y to get the uh, minimum so, is more or less a definition and this is how we derivate uh, a to the power so derivate something that has x in the power we use this okay okay let's talk about the 23rd question so it says d by dx uh, of this function that is 7 to the power 4x minus 3 equals what okay now again as i told you earlier as well in 23rd question what we see is we have 7 to this means that we will be using now uh, using the rule so it says ln of a in of 7 ax with this. So I can do that here, minus 3. But this is not the answer. We need to realize that in this example, we had a to the power x, okay? So obviously x, the derivative of x minus 3 as the power. When I will derivate this, I will get 4. And find your x minus option. So again, for these questions, yes, we refer to roots, but we need to be careful, okay? Now, obviously, this is a particular case where we have x in the power. So what we do is, with respect to x, and then we do ln e, but that number that develops power, that is a rule. It does not look like 
So anyways, okay. So this is the next question. Um, oh, all right. So this is the 29 question. Decreasing functions means that the function is decreasing only as in it is decreasing. And then after some point, it starts increasing, right? So clearly, this is not strictly decreasing. By strictly decreasing, they mean a function that is decreasing only. And that happens when derivative is negative. So this means that B would be the answer, right? This is not a strictly decreasing function. If I talk about a strictly decreasing function, so it would either be this or it could be this. We need to think about functions that are coming. We need to think about graphs that are coming down, okay? So B would be the answer. All right. Let's talk about the 30th question. So it says the derivative of an even function is always all right. Now think about even function. Even function is a function in which when we plug in negative values as well, we get positive values. For example, think of this type. So this means that if I talk about some examples of power 4, x to the power 6, all such uh, algebraic functions, uh, or it could be cos as well, because in case of cos 2, we get, uh, you know, cos cos x because cos is symmetric, right? So these are some examples of even functions. Now, when we will derivate this, we will get 2x. We will get 4x cubed. We will get 6x to the power 5. And now that function is no more an even function. That becomes an odd function because when power value will get negative answer, okay? So this means that when we an odd function as a result. Okay. So this is what we have. We have if y is ln x, then by 4, derivative of ln x square, the third one would be x. In order to find the answer, be b. All right. And this is how we derivate ln x. Some more questions. Talk about the 41 question. So here we have, if under root x plus under root y is 1, then slope of the tangent at 1 by 4, 1 by 4 is. Now, in order to do this question, you need to understand one thing. Since the question wants the slope of the tangent, we need to find the slope. But finding out the slope, we need to differentiate the equation. And it would be this equation. So let's just try differentiating it. Okay, so it is basically x to the power 1 by 2. I can write it as 1 by 2. And then I will have um, 1 by 2 minus 1 in the power. So that would make it minus 1 by 2. So I can write it as... under root x, okay. Then I have plus and then again, one by two because the power of y is one by two. First, I will differentiate y with respect to y dx. And I got this by using the chain rule. So whenever you are differentiating another variable in terms of another variable, never ever write down zero, okay. So we will, yes, in case of a partial differentiation, we do that, but at your level, you guys must not be knowing about partial differentiation. So we don't talk about it this way. So yes, this is what we have. And then it, uh, this the slope by by two under have two cancelled and this is the slope or the derivative or whatever we feel like calling it. Okay. Now what is root x plus under root y equals one? Then the slope of trusted in this point. So when we will plug in these values, we are going to get the same numerator and the same denominator would be by two. Once the derivative is applied, divided by minus one. So c would be the answer in this case. All right. Let's talk about the next question. It says equation of normal to the curve y equals sine x at pi by 0 is. Now, basically, we are talking about the equation of the normal and not the equation of the curve directly. Okay, so this is, there are two different things, right? This was directly slope of the tangent and this is basically um, slope of the normal. So they are perpendicular to each other. Anyways, we need to find by dx equals um, derivative of, and that would give me negative 1 because cos pi is negative one. And this negative one is the derivative of the tangent. It is not the derivative of the normal. The derivative of the normal would be one, because we know that the product of the derivatives of normal and tangent gives us minus one. So it would be one for the normal. All right. And uh, we know that the, let's just use the minus one, that is pi. And even and obvious, it's A, it's not A. If it's B, again, it's not A, but this one. So yes, it is C. All right. Now, again, for this question, that it was a question of normal. So step one was to find the derivative of the simple curve. Once we have the derivative of the tangent, we can just use the formula. And once we have used the formula, we got M to find the equation of a line. Okay. Let's talk about this question then. So basically, here we have, a rectangle is a parameter. Uh, a rectangle is of parameter 176 meters. 
what will be its maximum area so we have been told that the pyramid area now as soon as we come across maximum and minimum such terms we do understand that we need to do something about the derivative like equating it to zero and something of that sort but what exactly are we going to derivate in this case because we have no idea about that okay so we can just make up an equation for the parameter parameter is going to be one six plus width this is the formula for parameter so if i fix the width i can write length in terms of width and that would be i have done and i can use the length okay now i can write down the area in terms of width as Width multiplied by the length. So I have made made with the subject. I have everything in terms of yeah, in terms of that l eight l minus l square. Now eight minus two l. Okay. So now we have eighty eight minus two l in order to find out the maximum of l when derivative is zero because that length when the area is maximum and we will solve this and l will. All right, and uh, this means that length will turn out to be eighty eight divided by two. That is in this formula to find the maximum area and the area by eighty eight minus forty four. That would be forty four. So the answer would be nineteen hundred and thirty six meters square. So this would be the answer. Now for this question, things were not easy initially. We knew that we had maximum area, so we would be differentiating something and equating it to zero, just so we could get the values of um, the variables. But Step one was to fix the equation, and then we have used this equation uh, to get area, and finally we have derived the area and got l equals something, and the maximum related to the topic differentiation. First part of this video is already uploaded on our channel, so we you can check that out. And um, yes, that is it from my side. Thank you, Allah first.